um, uh, just, 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 just pray for us, the man will change. And that continued to happen. I asked the first son yesterday, I said, was this real? And the son told other stories. And I said so. Okay, video here, I'm there to see. Hey, my mia, or no, or turn on, I will, I will, I will, I will, I now my video we pain and I may sign a e bill because may a live video no or so for be free see mu I will say or no according to or no sa or so for no H let's say my mean one so far in domestic a e balance be a nothing so yes now we'll kidney problem so for now we'll cassa and I say no kidney problem near the other video in so I'm a day to see so for now we need my me ye now sorry bano one cassa assembly and we'll kidney problem it is nice and you can me platform is super can say so for no essay no let's work chantro on also so a reverend and we didn't have a for video we as i edit by simply tia someone so for the camp at tia semi ye so what is work as a sister a woo we and a kidney problem the kunwa noa obit me comment a good video no i say one who may be so a one also comment or make you fight sir a woo we who a bit here and also a very sad say we better now our yes in problems now to all also, we are now called baby because we are not cool. What do you say? Hello, we are busy for so we are busy fit a stretcher or do for the and they are not for our own dom is unique laser whitening. Unique laser whitening. I will toothpaste to strong one. What did you choose? Say I'm a busy aye fit a na aye fit a non so no na aye and carbonate beer a wo wo no mu beer any tea stain coffee stain smoking stain si beer unique laser whitening product. A beginning in every swam or come, come, come. The other one is a wood or so. Now, would it be a goo or brush it or so? Now, dear Chicho, send the swing in a come up. Oh, yeah, and who who were no general were no massa into a unique laser whitening. I was zero seven nine 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 seven nine two three three zero. Unique laser whitening or say money says okay. Passing of our beloved sister who is a kingdom asset and a generational asset to this generation. In the light of so much misinformation, in the light of so much misconstruction of events, I decided to set straight what I know concerning the situation. Over two and a half months to three months ago, she came to see me with her husband with complaints of chest pain, respiratory distress. I prayed for her and prayed and prayed again. And when the symptoms did not abate, I counseled that they go to the hospital to help us to know exactly what we were dealing with. And they asked if I could assist, help them facilitate that process. I called our head of medical team, Dr. Sang, who is consultant pediatrician with the Federal Medical Center, Kefi, to assist handle their situation. And he called the Federal Medical Center, Jabi, called colleagues there where they attended to them. On seeing her, they ordered some investigations after examination, and that included CT scan computerized axial tomography scan that was done and from what the doctor saw they felt that there was need for further investigation either at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital or the National Hospital in Abuja I called the doctor consultant pulmonologist respiratory physician at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital Dr. Ako Alexander told him the situation and he asked that they come to see him immediately and they went to the Guagualada teaching hospital after they had examined her there and saw the situation they felt that there was a need for histology and biopsy of the lung tissue and they, and they asked that she go to the national hospital to get that done I again called the Dr. Jibrin who is head of pathology and consultant histopathologist of the National Hospital in Abuja and reported the issue to him and to help us 
go ahead with the investigations and find out what exactly happened. I am calling names and calling places because the people are available are alive and they are all verifiable. And then they continued the management. Um, the histology was done from what I saw at that time. The picture was much milder than what the CT scan earlier on showed. And so we felt very happy that at least there was relief. She called me daily, and we, literally daily, and prayed with her. She reported progress. The point came where she needed no oxygen anymore, uh, according to what she said to me one night, and that they checked her oxygen perfusion, and it was 100%. And we were very, very excited at that progress. That was the point it was before we went over to the crusade in Cameroon. It was at, in Cameroon the second night that I got to know of the unfortunate incidents of her passing. Now, if there was domestic violence that led to or coincided with those symptoms that she came with two and a half months, two and a half months to three months ago, there is no way I would know. And if there had been perennial domestic violence, there was no way I would have known. The things we're hearing after her passing were things that were very, very strange to my hearing. Then I began to ask questions. First, I asked the twin sister, are you aware that your sister, were you aware that your sister passed through all these things? She said, yes, she knew some of them, but that the majority of them, she was hearing also from those she confided in. I asked her, I said, if you knew, why didn't you let us know? And the twin sister said, she always begged her, please don't let the church, know. don't tell the pastor, please, the man will change, please, um, uh, just, 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 just pray for us, the man will change. And that continued to happen. I asked the first son yesterday, I said, was this real? And the son told other stories. And I said, so why didn't you tell me? Because typically they will run to me after service. And I'll pray for them, lay hands on them. Why didn't you tell me about what was going on in the home? And the young man said, they couldn't tell me because the father would always ask them after they left me and said, what did you tell the pastor? Did you tell him anything? And so on and so forth. I, for that, other members in the choir who were privy to this, some of the things that were going on, I asked one of them when we paid the visit to the house of the disease yesterday, what happened? Why were we not aware of all these things? The same story that she would always go on her knees and ask them, please don't, don't. Just pray, don't. We are trusting God for him to change. The last one that taught me so much was the music producer who came to see me in the office two days ago to tell me his own experience. How he witnessed that the man slapped the wife in his music studio and I said to him you saw a man slap a woman in your presence and you left the man alone and you are a man yourself and he said before he could respond to the to the man the woman again in tears on her knees begged him not to do anything to leave him alone and not even to do anything at all and so on and so forth so we have had these stories and this is all the things that we got to know after she had passed. As a person and as a church, everyone who knows us know that we have zero degree tolerance for domestic abuse and wife battery of any sort. If you ever listen to any of our relationship messages, there is a principle, a policy, and a rule we have. And that is, it is better to be alive without a marriage than to die because of marriage. We've said that over and over and over. I am sure that some of us would have listened to the clips of those messages. Now, this kind of time is a time where people heap all manner of blames on the church. And that is typical because whatever goes wrong, any time it is the first point of call is the church. I have seen people ask questions. Why should a wife abuser
be a, a member of a church? Or how can somebody be so brutal and, and, is, and is a member of the church? That is not a question that you should, that people who know scripture should ask. You know the ark of Noah, the same ark that carried good animals, also had evil beasts inside the same ark. You know Jesus Christ had the followership of what the Bible called the multitude. And for me, multitude means multiple attitudes. People with multiple inclinations. People with multiple tendencies. People with multiple behaviors. In fact, one of those that followed Jesus Christ who was a thief, who also sold him to death. He was called Judas Iscariot. Question is, how could somebody follow Jesus Christ as perfect as Jesus was, as instructive as he was, as impactful as he was, and still be a thief and a murderer? That question is left for everybody to answer. And I can't tell you the worst of it all. There was a man, a person, a personality called Lucifer, who was already was in heaven and became Satan, the devil, in the under the nose of God in heaven. A place where there was no sin and could have been no sin at all. This guy became the inventor and originator of sin. How is it possible for somebody to become a devil from being an archangel right inside heaven? That is how possible it is for anybody to be anything while inside the church. Even the best of pastors or preachers or teachers in the world cannot change any man or woman who is unwilling to be changed. In case you feel frustrated at anything and you are airing your frustration here and there is a transfer of frustration, a transfer of aggression. The church is not your place for transferring frustration and aggression. We are willing to help you. If you have so much bitterness, so much frustration, and so much distraction in your life, and you don't know where to vent it, but in situations like this, we can help you. We want to let you know we love you, and Jesus loves you. It is well with you, and it is well with your loved ones. For the family of the deceased, we pray for strength and help, and for the body of Christ generally, it is well with you. In Jesus' precious name. This is Dr. Pastor. Okay. Anyway, eh asemwa eh ye ne sofo ne be kan ye wan kan wo mu se onya eh kidney problem ni ade ade. Wo kan de wono no enim en wo kan ye. Na woman ba ko ano eh me se o activist. O ko pie mu fi ho eh ye nkura no interview. Awre ho se mu a o kan eh wo ni interview we mu no ano odin pa. Inti asemwa na woman no eh kan fa mami ai wo we hu. Compound and saw the children. Four young children. Beautiful children. Three boys, one girl. He had so hypnotized the children that they should not speak and they should never say anything that has been happening in the house. I came in with the crew, with all the directors from the ministry and the permanent secretary. And so sad, we did all we could. We met a friend of his there who has stationed himself to monitor what is happening and the nanny that visits them to take care of the children. So when I was asking questions, the children, I saw that they were not forthcoming. And uh, I now excuse everyone out. I said I needed to have one and one with the children. So I sent all the children in. I asked the nanny to take them in. I started with the first son. I said, do you love your mommy? He said, yes. Has your mommy taught you to tell lies? He said, no. I said, you know that, she, is she alive or dead? He said, she's dead. You know that she's now your angel and she's watching you. She'll be very sad if you tell lies. I'm here, I introduced myself, and I told him that the president is concerned, every Nigerian is concerned, we all join them to mourn Osinachi's death. But what... <coughs> we want from him is the truth. If they want us to help them, all I want from you is the truth. The boy adjusted his seat. He looked at me. I said, do you fear God? Did your mom teach you how to pray and speak the truth? He said, yes. Then he opened up. 
There was nobody, myself, himself, and my permanent secretary. And thank God, my PAMSEC was recording everything. The boy now opened up and said that their dad used to beat their mom, and their mom was always sad. She would always sad and thinking he would beat her and fling her off. He doesn't spare them himself, that he gathered them in the room and will be beating them with the big belt. If the mom comes in to ask him to stop, he will turn back on her, beat her, lift her, fling her up. And that has always been the issue. And that they are always scared and that he doesn't go out, he's always in the home. It's the mom that runs around, she goes for her gospel music, bring back the money. In fact, if the money is paid through cash, uh, through a bank account, it's paid to his account. She has no account of her own. Any cash she comes back with, he collects it. And he will give just a peanut to her for feeding. In fact, the boy said, he eats more than them. He will give mommy small money, and when she cooks, the next minute he starts shouting and beating her, that he's always shouting. And their mom was living in fear, always sitting sad. Oh, it was such a horrible story to hear from a young boy of just 12. The eldest son is 12. And because of the trauma the children went through, I asked him which class he is. He's in class 5 at the age of 12. Why? He said he can't even read. A boy of 12 years can't even read. So mentally, this child is already destroyed. Retarded, yes. Completely. I was battling with tears. So when I finished, I asked him to move to the other side. I called the nanny to bring in the second child. The second son, wonderful, beautiful son, who is also gifted. Mm -hmm. I learned that he sings well. They mentioned it, so I asked him, I said, can you sing for me? When he sang, you could hear his voice like an angel. The DPO was, had just come to do some investigation, and he met me there. We were all battling with tears. The DPO, a man, couldn't help his tears. The second son explained the same horrible situation that they've all been going through. <clears throat> so my mom said, even these two were enough. The other two, when I said, okay, call them, and uh, let's just... Uh, the third one said, no, mommy, I too, I want to talk. The little one, they insisted that they, they would also tell their story. So we sent everyone out, and we listened to each one of them, one after the other. In fact, the last one is seven. A girl, the only girl in the house. It's so sad. This is a situation that I'm calling on all Nigerians to stand with us and demand justice for Osinachi, and these children must be protected because he is not just a bully. I lack words to describe this man. Okay, and saw the children. We and in some way, woman is so edit to the effort of Osinachi, a world we are home. A bit more comment a good video, and as necessary, so for no Obama platform, so back as I said, or kidney problem near there, no be chantro. As some nineties are added now, so because our comment to good with us made me too be awful. So, what your rest now when I say, and queen, my wife, and you who Christo Christo, so I call baby. Na as a month, I say, Mko, I was a well, I won't quite say, Oh, yes, I'm on. But to me, I subscribe to your channel, no, send a baby video to our Sabbath County. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, name me, I don't mind also so. Video number to one, I want to wait to me when you be now, so I pray. I think if our comment is a good video, na say. Ya check it here page you know so you only say nipo ma subscribe to your channel no eh 51.8% 48.2 and subscribe e we bet ma subscribe now so be ka eh 51.8 no ho and if you check it here geographical no location no nipo ma a subscribe no mo kan ebusu e ho US ne din kan UK ne toso Germany ne toso Ghana ba and na Italy ba be bia wo no so bet me a subscribe na wa fi wa share na do comment in so go video na say like page no na fi wo mi adoma no so video ni beto announce when you be ahwe me dá-se.